So understand what, what gets you excited behind this and then understand there, there's no excuses. There's only implementation. And, there, and when there's a will, there's a way. I got it on, on my arm right here, uh, on my wristband. When there's a will, there's a way. And trust me when I tell you, I live by that. And it's, it's that mindset. It's that killer mindset. of. Hello, you're listening to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast, presented by Brandon Elliott. This show will be going over all aspects of real estate investing and is intended to educate, motivate, and prepare you to take action on your first or next real estate investment. For more information, please visit BrandonElliottInvestments.com. Thank you for listening and enjoy. Welcome back, everyone. It is your boy, Mr. Brandon Elliott. I'm excited today. We're going to be covering something that really struck my my heart today. I was on a one-on-one coaching call today and I had somebody just struggling to a certain degree with the process of going through and wanting desperately to get to the end result, the end result being generational wealth, wanting to stop wasting time and get some properties underneath their belt so that they could leave it to their family, their kids, break off that generational curse sooner than later. And it was really eye-opening to me because I was like, that's what we're all in it for, right? And so they were asking me, you know, with, uh, you know, distress on their face, If I was them, what would I do? And it's kind of like an open-ended question to a certain degree because everybody's in a different position. Everybody's in a different path. Success may look different, you know, definition to each and every single person, right? But there's a lot of similarities there too. So what I am going to be covering in this video, I thought it was very profound. I've had several other people ask me in this market, in this crazy times that we're in with war across seas and God knows if it ever comes over here with politics and all the other nonsense and inflation prices being very high. If you actively, if you want to get active, if you want to get hands on with real estate and not be a passive investor, right? Because being the bank, if you have the capital and being the bank and being hands off because you're busy and you're you know, focus on something else, but you still want to get your hands or your feet wet into real estate, then being the bank is always the best. That That's just plain and simple. If you secure yourself properly, you can get a strong return. You get the security, you get the benefits, taxes, you know, interest, all that fun stuff, putting your money to work like the bank, right? So be a lender, be just, you know, be the bank, right? But if you don't have the capital and you actually just want to focus more on that hands-on approach so that you can get higher rewards and actually implement this new tool, this new education to your tool belt so that you could pass it down to your kids so that you could implement it a few times and acknowledge like, hey, Brandon is not the smartest or the sharpest crayon in the the most colorful crayon in the in the box here. So if he can do it, we acknowledge that it doesn't take a rocket scientist to be able to do the process of real estate. Um, so if that's the case, you know, all the fear and, and insecurities and, and simple lack of education brings all these things, right? So if I don't feel confident in the first couple of deals, like nobody would, right? Because it's your first time doing it. But maybe after doing a, a couple of those with guidance and education, I will become more confident, more bold, more secure and learn from certain mistakes and improve over time to be able to succeed with a process that's in place. And that tool right there, learning the process of real estate, it can be really rewarding in many different ways. And passing that on to your kids can be, you know, uh, game changing and definitely breaking off that generational curse. So today, what we are going to be covering is what would I do? What would Brandon Elliott do if I were you just getting started, uh, just getting started out in today's market and wanting to do a deal with limited amount of money, okay? If you don't want to do a deal, then again, be a a money partner, okay? And just look to try to get 20, 30%, double your money. If it's if it's smaller amounts, then just try to double it per year. When it gets down to bigger amounts, a couple hundred thousand dollars, then maybe try to get the 20, 30% per year. There are syndications and opportunities out there that you can do that with, okay? Absolutely. All right, now, with that being said, at the end of the day, there's a lot to this, kind of opening up uh, the can of worms here, because education is going to be the the foundation piece of all of it, right? So education is going to be very, very crucial here. With 
the education that I'm talking about, I'm talking about the strategy, the location, you know, how, what, what's gravitating you towards investing in real estate. There's 30 plus ways to make money in real estate. Each and every single one of them works. There's certain seasons and times throughout the cycle that ones can work better than others potentially. And there are other opportunities when everybody's all in, you know, on subject two right now. Everybody's all in on that. Everybody's super excited on that because, you know, Pays Morby is promoting it and pushing it really hard, right? So if everybody's all excited for that, then what else is everybody neglecting? There's plenty of things people are neglecting right now. And so there's opportunities that you don't need to chase the herd. You can do the opposite and still succeed and, and be able to crush it. With that being said, I've also talked to other people that are naive about the process and just say, oh, well, when I'm ready, I'll just I'll just start a wholesaling company. Oh, you're just going to start a wholesaling company. OK, with what guidance, mentorship, like education, money to invest. Oh, well, I'll just you know, I'll, I'll just do it. It's just like any business. It's a it's a full blown business. It's not something that wholesaling you can just half ass. It's very KPIs driven and there's you know, one lever over here, you playing around with it will affect a domino effect in all other areas. So I don't want you to be naive walking into this. So the, the best way to cure being naive and uh, stupidity or fear or lack of direction is simply just getting the proper education. So I always recommend first and foremost, focus on all the books, all the podcasts, all the YouTube to go through the 30 plus ways of making money in real estate. Figure out what you're gravitated towards. Understand for about 20 minutes of time, understand from beginning to end what it looks like for each and every strategy. The person that does this and understands from beginning to end roughly what it looks like, then they're going to be a hell of a lot more equipped when shit hits the fan. At the end of the day, we always have plan A in our pocket. Like that's what we're going for. But when plan A doesn't work, and many times it doesn't, there's always alterations that take place. Then you got to jump to plan B or plan C, plan D. The people that fail that I see the most that fail in real estate is because they, they go from plan A and then when shit hits the fan, they don't react in time. They don't know what else to do. And they jump all the way to the suicide mission of, you know, plan Z right away. It's like, holy cow, you know, I'm sure there's a couple things that we could have done right here prior to jumping all the way down to the worst case scenario. And it's only because of the lack of education, the lack of, they just don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And so I encourage you when you get the proper education of understanding all these different metrics, you have more tools at your tool belt, and then you are more prepared and positioned to actually win. And so... At this time, I would focus on what is really attracting you, like what gets you excited, what out of all those different moving pieces, what's like really getting you stirred up. And for me, it was always the burst strategy. I love buying distressed properties, it, the worst one in the neighborhood, doing a complete renovation on it. And within three to six months, having that complete, having all of it paid for by credit or by OPM in some you know, form or fashion, money is never going to be the issue. Let me just, you know, stop that for a second. If if you have a lack of money right now, that's okay. That's not the issue. Learning the education on how to finding, how to find a deal, that's the value. And so the person that has things under contract brings the value and you can stir up and get contracts in very creative ways. You don't need a ton of capital to be able to get this going. But yeah, long story short, like well, once you identify what gets you excited, that the burst strategy is what got me going. And being able after it's after it fully renovated, then rent it out to a, you know, several people that are fighting over it because and getting top dollar for it because it's brand new afterwards, refinancing it with the bank, getting 70 percent of whatever it's worth, ideally having little to no money at all into it. And then it still cash flows at the end of the day, but get all my money back, pay off my investors or OPM, a.k.a. my credit cards. You know, getting all the points with that, going on a free vacation to pat myself on the back, saying, Brandon, good job done. And then afterwards, repeating that process. I've always loved that. I've always loved the tax benefits. I've always loved the cash flow. I've always loved 
you know, as a man creating, making something brand new again and taking the worst property in the neighborhood and making it amazing and having all the neighbors love you for it and buying you dinner and so forth because you just, uh, you know, increase their uh, value of their homes by, you know, pushing all this appreciation. And and the cool part is the more education that you have on this, you're going to figure out what you gravitate towards. Again, doesn't need to be the birth strategy. People say the birth strategy can't work in today's day and age. It's BS. You don't know where to look to find that amazing deal. We're going to cover that in a moment. But it doesn't need to be the birth strategy. It could be anything that you're attracted to, anything that gets you excited. Next, I, I always do recommend after you figure out the education, it, it's always going to be in this order. It's going to be the strategy. You got to pick the strategy. And when you pick the strategy, I want you to laser beam focus all the books, podcasts, YouTube, nothing else, nothing less, nothing more, but deep dive on all of that for the next six months. Do not sleep on that strategy and do not deviate from it. When you're watching somebody on social media and that guru is promoting something and it's something different because, you know, it, they make it look easy. Do not be three feet from gold. Give up and say, oh, this looks much easier. I'm going to do that. You know, it's important to test and try and at least give 12 months to, you know, 15, 18 months before quitting and moving on to a different strategy. Real estate can change your life each and every way as possible. Do not sleep on it. Take action, massive action, and stay laser beam focused. The people that are laser beam focused, those are the ones that are going to succeed. The one that is trying to chase multiple rabbits catches none. You've heard that many times over. So just don't be that, don't have that stupidity of thinking, you know, you could quit here and then jump on here. And don't be a millennial thinking, you know, that millennial mindset of wanting things today or or tomorrow. Like, no shit. We all want amazing results. We are all super impatient because of today's day and age. We have everything at a at a click of a button on our phones and so forth, but have some patience and understand that this is well worth fighting for. And over time, what it will do for you, you, you wouldn't want to change it for a million years. Okay. Um, with that being said, after you pick the strategy, then you want to pick the location. Not every strategy is going to pair up with every location. Okay. So location, the things that you're going to want to look for is job growth, population growth and something unique about the area, depending on the strategy. But when I say something unique about the area, I'm talking about, you know, several other people are high level. I don't know how to explain this. When I started investing over in Ohio, there were three big investors. Two of them were in their 90s and their family wanted them to sell. They had a bunch of properties they started kind of neglecting. And then a third one was in his 50s that had a divorce and he had to sell 40 plus properties. All of these guys had a ton of properties and it was flooding the market more, making it more of a buyer's opportunity. So that's one thing, okay? That's typically not a great sign, by the way. Um, but you can take a look and deeper dive into it to see what actually makes sense and uh, try to justify the situation. In addition to that, there's also uh, another, you know, um, unique situation is that there is a famous Catholic university over in this area of Ohio that ended up announcing that juniors and seniors didn't have any more housing available on campus for them. So they were going to need to look off campus for housing in the next semester. It just happened the semester before, like they just announced it when I was looking over in that area. That was a huge like ding, 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 ding. That's a big indicator because I started doing more deep, you know, due diligence and seeing that there's people all around the world, not just in, in America, but all around the world that actually come to this little location in Ohio to stay at this university. And because of the the growing demand of that, they needed more housing. Great opportunity. So little key factors like that can be really, really useful in, in many different ways, but you got to find that uniqueness, okay? And, and something, so job growth, population growth, and then something unique about the situation. What I like to focus on is wholesalers to get my leads. You know, I rather pay a wholesaler that has the business, that's good at what they do, that can find off-market deals, heavily discounted, do all the negotiating with the, the crazy ass seller that's going through horrible times, you know, whatever it may be, and be able to utilize and leverage their business 
to be able to pay a, you know, not even a premium, but a, a fee, an assignment fee. Um, I've paid as much as 40, 50 grand and I would pay much, much more if there's still meat and potatoes, like skin on the bone for me to actually eat and make my profits. Just know your numbers. Don't get screwed over by some wholesaler's business that is trying to gouge on certain numbers. Not all of them are right. Not all of them are wrong, but you need to know your numbers. So again, going back to the education, when you know what you know and you you are laser beaming on your strategy, you're going to dial in the numbers. You're going to understand the process from beginning to end. You're going to have clarification about the whole process and confidence while you're doing it. In addition, try to find a mentor that's doing exactly that strategy. I don't care. You're not going to get away with like buying coffee for people anymore. People have woken up from the times of, you know, having extra time for people that don't respect it, that are willing to actually pay for it. You always got to pay to pay attention. So the people that are willing to pay to pay attention, they're the ones that get the best results. They're the ones that aren't going to waste your time. And even if they did waste their time, that's on them because they've already paid you for your time to be away from you, your, your friends or your family or your own business. And that's for if you're a mentor. If you're not a mentor and you're trying to be a mentee, then don't offer somebody coffee. You know, you could try that. Good luck. But also send them a check, like give them a check at coffee for some good amount for, for their damn time and let them know that you're serious. Okay. And, um, that's just what it is. Like, I don't care who you are. It is what it is. Like money talks at the end of the day. So don't, don't be cheap on it. And, uh, again, it's like, it, it's going to, it's going to pay in dividends uh, tremendously, the relationship that's built, as well as what you can do in the longevity of things. When you, when you really take this serious, this tool for real estate can be life changing in many, many ways, but dealing with a wholesaler is going to be tremendous. Uh, once you know that location network with everybody and their grandmother, I'm talking the brokers, uh, real estate agents, wholesalers, a chamber of commerce, a librarian, the the housing at the local schools, universities, regular colleges, high schools, for God's sakes, like the local shops, uh, police department, fire department, like I said, chamber of commerce, I believe all, all these different, any um, real estate association groups, you can Google that. That's, that should be a no brainer and a first come like situation at the end of the day. There's, there's plenty of different resources, even the local diners, like Find all these things and build the relationships and let people know exactly what you are looking for, exactly what you're looking for. So you should know, you know, I'm looking for four units, you know, multiple units, residential, two, three or four units in these locations, not in this neighborhood, in this neighborhood, on the come up uh, that are distressed, like whatever it may be. Just be laser beam focused and know exactly what that is. Now, let's talk about funding. And I typically recommend people get the funding first before jumping into the wholesaler side. But wholesaling could take a little bit of time of like finding and building those relationships. So just start that. Start that during that six month phase of getting educated and learning. Just be a fly on the wall, networking and finding that mentor and, you know, doing your due diligence and constantly finding the wholesalers and get on their list so they can start sending you some deals. But learn how to underwrite them and start, you know, writing back offers behind it. I'll talk about the offers in just a moment, but let's talk about the funding. This is a very big piece of it. At the end of the day, there's an enormous amount of capital in this world. You should never... There's not a lack in in funding or financing ability. There's a lack in... A mindset, in poverty, poor mindset at the end of the day. And so if, if you believe money's, you know, in lack, then that's exactly what you're going to see as, as a reflection of it. Long story short, money comes easily and uh, frequently and abundantly. That's just what it is. It's like, and if you repeat that to yourself ongoingly, you're going to start seeing that and manifesting it. And it's funny because it's like when you have no money, you typically have a bunch of time on your hands. Now, when you start actually making money and find a hustle that's actually working and, and you're, you know, it's paying for itself, then at the end of the day, you typically have less time on your hands, but you're making more money. 
And then eventually you're like working so damn much. You barely have any time for yourself. You're busy, 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 but you are making decent money. Now it's time to start investing into yourself by buying back some of your time, you know, hiring out, you know, elevate and delegate, hiring people and training them to be able to start taking over the little things that you don't enjoy doing that you're not the best at and finding mentors to be able to help guide you and take you to the, to the next level. At the end of the day, you are the best candidate for anything. There's always somebody out there that's bigger, better, that can do it faster, that can that is equipped for it, that you you can pay less like than your time is worth and you can focus on what you're good at and what you can really enjoy, right? And so just trust that and understand like you you're not going to there's you can't keep telling yourself that there's nobody out there that can do it better than me. It's bullshit. I'm calling you out on it. You know, that's a very old school way of thinking. And so if, you, if you're if you hearing this and you're saying that to yourself, quit that nonsense. It's a slow and steady uphill battle if you're doing it that way. And it's limiting yourself. If you want abundance, and trust me, it's out there for you. It just, it's going to take you to be able to unleash that and really take it to the next level. What, what I would love to just uh, understand here make sense of the situation and for you to understand here is that if you have no money right now there's many hustles that you can do i I used to collect cans in in my acura my tl acura i would go around to restaurants i worked at two restaurants back in the day full time each one and i would have one day off throughout the week and on this one day off is when i would get my laundry done i would take all the cans that i stored up on the side of my house like on this gate hoping that nobody would steal them from me, like no homeless people. But I would collect, you know, several times throughout the week at the end of the day from the restaurants and other restaurants nearby. And I would take all these cans, put them in my car, make a couple trips, and I'd get a couple hundred bucks. And so I did that a couple times throughout the month. I also would donate plasma twice a week and I would get close to like 700 to a thousand bucks per week if I was hitting certain bonuses. During that time, I would be reading. The reason I got into donating plasma is because I was reading so much on my bed and it just started frustrating me. I wanted to multitask and kind of double dip and see if I could make money while I was while I was reading. So that's how I, I looked into it. I Googled, you know, how many different ways can I make money? And I just found all these little things and I started testing and trying things. I started cleaning trash cans and offering property management companies and door knocking to do exactly the same. And I would charge $30 uh, per trash can to clean and I would knock it out in 20 minutes. Eventually, when I had so many trash cans to do, I, I hired on an assistant and I would pay them 20 bucks an hour and I would tell them don't take longer than 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes to knock out each one and make sure that it's good. And at the end of the day, I would just try to get more, right? And so I would pay them 20 and I would collect the difference. And so it's opportunities like that that you can create for yourself if you're a hustler, if you have that hustler mindset. But eventually as you hustle, hustle, hustle to the top and you're getting cash flow, you want to start buying back your time. And so that's where the hustler has to die and you have to create the CEO of yourself and really be able to take you and your business to the next level. And with that being said, the funding aspect, that's what we do. How I did it was utilizing credit. There's, I mean, there's a secret sauce to it. It's not rocket science. A lot of it's going to be common sense, but common sense isn't so common anymore. And if you think you can do it on your own, trust me when I tell you, I want to stop you right then and there. You can't. (laughs) You can't do it on your own for the simple fact that there is a, a certain, you know, special sauce to it. And there's people out there that will do it for you, that will jack up your credit, mess it up, get you shitty results. You'll be disappointed. You'll be scratching your head. Why the hell did I do this and give up so much percentage or even give up equity for some crumbs within your business? Keep full you know, equity in your business. Own all of it. Have full control. You don't need to pay premiums or, or, you know, have do it for you services that are screwing up your credit, not giving a shit about the results and, and having flat fees and so forth. Invest in your education at Credit Council Elite. We're teaching business owners nationwide how to be able to get up to $500,000 in new capital that can be repeated every six months with interest rates as low as 0%. Now ask yourself this, what is that worth to you? Like, what could you do 
with that type of capital when it's 0% for anywhere from six months to 22 months, on average, 18 months. If you could actually utilize and leverage and get new funding, same amounts every six months, even with 18 month turnaround time for the first 0% interest ending, that could be three times if you're already done mass applies, getting massive amounts of funding. And when an application is done, an application sequence, when it's done correctly, you can get up to 90% approval odds. Doing this with our bank relationship managers that work strictly with underwriting, you get way better results. You even get free money from sign up bonuses that are free points that, you know, if you did it on your own, you would get a like $600, let's say. But with our resources, you can get double that. And a lot of the and that's per card. And when you're applying for, you know, 10 to 50 plus cards, that adds up. We've had people walk away with 15, 20,000 in free cash from just sign up bonuses. So you, you pay for what you get at the end of the day. So don't be cheap. Invest in yourself because you're you're worth it and your results matter. And so I, I just want to like highlight here the way that you take full control of your future and your destiny is getting involved in the education and paying to play. And so when you learn how to fix your credit quickly, boost up your score, stay in the 800 club, get the best of the best rates, learn how to apply with the banks in the right order, in the right sequence, because there's 43 plus moving metrics on how the banks and lenders are all judging you. And if you don't know them, it's guaranteed you're going to fail. These banks are looking for reasons to deny you plain, you know, blank, simple, you know, they're looking for the red flags and because they're looking for high risk and low risk. And so when you're educated position with the common sense and the decency of knowing how to put it in the right order, then you're going to succeed that much greater and, and the results will kind of show it all at the end of the day. And so when you learn how to get two, three, four, or five hundred thousand dollars plus with interest rates as low as zero percent and that type of capital regularly per person in your family for your business, your future, like your finances for everything else. It's it's like it matters. And so don't sleep on this stuff because the education in I always say like real estate changed my life. Credit was the catalyst to do all of that. And I, I grew up poor. I, I grew up on section eight food stamps you know, my mom on social security, manic depressive bipolar. I had to be the man of the house, or at least I believe that to be true, kind of over me at a very young age. I got my first job at age 12. There's drugs and in my house and, and violence in the neighborhood and so forth. I was getting in fights regularly, and even though I grew up in a, in a great neighborhood, but it was right around the corner from me. So at the end of the day, when you learn this tool of how to talk to these banks and how to get this massive amounts of funding and fixing your credit quickly, you will always, always be set up. You'll always have opportunities at your fingertips. Trust me when I tell you that. It's a tool that will always pay you dividends for the rest of your life. That is a, a pure blown fact. And so I wish more people acknowledged that, understood it and implemented it because what it can do for the longevity for you and your kids and, and for so much more, like that's the power of this. So the funding piece, it's going to be huge because when you get a deal, the difference between me and you is that if you learn this, this amazing trait of finding an amazing deal, you may not know what it looks like right away. You may not be fast enough to be able to take it down when you're going against real investors that have all cash, no contingencies, acknowledge a deal quickly and submit an offer and to, you know, close in, in five to seven days, all cash. How the hell are you going to compete against that? You have to compete against it and you have to be quick because good deals don't last long. And so that's why, you know, when you get the the funding aspect locked in first, it will definitely bless you tenfold in the longevity of things. And we've seen it just so many times. So that's what I would do. I would focus on the funding. I would even set up a, a life insurance policy, an infinite banking structure first. And, and then after that, so get funding, get educated on real estate during that whole time. Work on getting funding by investing in yourself in Credit Count C. Lee. After you get the funding, get a, a full life in, uh, infinite banking structure policy in place and be ready to jump into any deal at any given time. And then as you're starting to work with all these different people within your location that you want to invest in, it doesn't need to be your backyard, but it could be. My first time investing is 3,000 miles away. And what that did was it forced me to be able to build systems so that I wasn't 
because I couldn't control it any other way. I wouldn't be able to drive by a dozen times a day, wasting my time, wasting my money and, and doing hands on work. I had to build systems, build relationships because it was 3000 miles away. And I only flew there quarterly to keep an eye on things and build those relationships. So I needed to rely on others and build systems to really succeed at this. But when you have wholesalers and everybody else in that area knowing exactly what you're looking for, crystal clear, no ifs, ands, or buts, they know exactly what they should be sending you, you should start receiving a bunch of opportunities throughout the week. And at that point, all you got to do is submit three offers per day. You should analyze three offers a day. You should submit offers on each and every one of them per day. I don't care if it's a million dollars off. As long as you justify, you're not just lowballing offers, you're justifying exactly why or why not these numbers work for you and that you're giving real factual, like no BS, but true data on why you need these numbers to be where they're at. And even if some of them are, are like flabbergasted, like you need 20, 40, 50, 100,000 for miscellaneous because you don't know for the uncertain things. That's okay. Start learning the uncertain things and still keep a buffer in there and just try to get it to more of a reasonable, accurate number. But as long as you can justify any low ball offers, then justify it and submit your offers every single day. The power behind submitting, like the people that come to me and say, oh, Brandon, I, I can't get a deal. Well, how many offers have you submitted this week? None. Well, no shit, you can't get a deal. It's not just going to jump on your lap. It's not going to be pounding on your back saying, hey, Brandon, like, you, you know, buy me, buy me. That's not the case. You have to put in the, the work as well. And so when you submit three offers a day, then you have 90 offers submitted within 30 days. That adds up. Like it's a numbers game. So within 30 to 90 days, I guarantee it. If you're submitting three offers a day, you will get something under contract, something negotiated back and forth several times, and you will lock something in within that time frame. In many cases, it's going to be a heck of a lot sooner than 30 days. Many of people that I've taught this and they've implemented it truly, they've received amazing deals under contract within their first two weeks, almost every single time. It's the same exact implementation that I do for my own deals when I'm really hungry for an opportunity and a deal that I, I want to get and need to get sometime soon because I have the capital ready to go and I'm hungry for my next deal. It's the same exact strategy that I do. It works to this day. I believe it will always work. So just keep that in mind. It's a numbers game. You got to submit three offers a day and you'll see the compounding effect of what that does. At the end of the day, after you, you know, you have something under contract, you're just doing due diligence, right? You're you're doing exactly the education of, of what you learned in the beginning and the whole process for the last six months building up to this point. And so you're just gonna follow the process from beginning to ending. Like from beginning to end, you need to know the process and feel comfortable with it. Your cash on cash return of like how much do you really have tied up into this? Can you afford to have the money tied up into this? Is there a plan to get the money back out at the end of the day at a certain point? How long is that going to be? You should know what it looks like from beginning to end and how you're going to pull it off. And then that's your plan A. Have a backup plan for plan B, C, D. Have multiple backup plans just in case. Because like I said, I, I've been a part of numerous transactions. I've always had plan A. I've never finalized with plan A. Every single time there's always a wrench that's tossed into it, which is okay. It makes you stronger. It, it helps build more character. And I've always still walked away on top victorious. But you know, with real estate, there's always something else that comes up. It takes longer. It costs more money. You need to be prepared and positioned for this and have backup plans knowing that, yeah, I'm hoping and praying for this, but if I don't get this, well, is it still going to be okay if it takes longer, costs more? You know, if I can't fund it, who's funding it? How are we getting this done? How are we bringing it to the finish line and so forth? You know, what lenders am I going to be using? All that fun stuff. So OPM is the name of the game. Other people's money, whether that's your own, aka credit, savings, 401k, self-directed, you know, uh, private money lender, hard money lender, credit, you name it, figure it out. Understand the process, understand the cash out refinance if that's what you plan on doing. 
know the lenders, have a DCSR low lined up, know the requirements, make sure you qualify, make sure your credit's in good shape, make sure that you're not searching for too much credit around that time, removing hard inquiries each and every time as you get them. You learn this within Credit Council Elite. So I, I say this not jokefully or playfully, like, you really got to dial this stuff in knowing what it looks like from beginning to end. And then having those backup plans, it's very crucial. So those are the eight different pieces that I put together here, which is the education, the strategy, picking the location, funding, get a wholesaler, um, submit your three offers, follow the process from beginning to end, knowing it crucially. And then lastly, having backup plans. I'm a big, big advocate on all of this. I really am. Again, real estate changed my life. Credit was the catalyst to do it. We're, we're collecting about $50,000 a month right now. I say, quote unquote, passive income. There's nothing passive about it. It takes work. It takes systems. It takes people and processes to implement and, and have it running, you know, not effortlessly, but with individuals managing it, right? And there's seasons in life for everything. So you just want to make sure that, you know, the $12 million in real estate assets that I have currently, which is great. Um, we have plenty of equity. We have no money into any of our deals. They all cash flow. Like th it's amazing. There's ways and techniques and strategies for you to be able to do exactly the same thing. And right now we're outsourcing a lot of the real estate stuff that we were doing and selling our Ohio properties that I originally started off on for cash flow because they're seasons for things like we're doing a deal out here, a fix and flip that we're going to collect about $800,000 on, you know, like that's a, that's a big difference. And it takes a couple months. It took four, it's taken five months on this one. So uh, instead of making 10 grand a month off of the long-term rentals, it's like, I can give that to somebody else that can bless them and not have to give up a couple hours here and there throughout the month. So understand what, what gets you excited behind this and then understand there, there's no excuses. There's only implementation and, there, and when there's a will, there's a way. I got it on, on my arm right here, uh, on my wristband. When there's a will, there's a way. And trust me when I tell you, I live by that. And it's, it's that mindset. It's that killer mindset of understanding like if it's meant to be, it's up to me. And if you focus on that strategy, if you focus on, you know, that, that you can accomplish anything you put your mind to, then trust me when I tell you, it's so true and it will take place. So I, I hope this blesses you today. Like real estate has blessed me and how credit has blessed me. If you are not the type of person to let any more time pass, like you, you are saying enough is enough. I'm drawing the line in the sand today. Today is the day that I make the change. I, I resonate with all this. I, I want to change my life. I want to be able to get into real estate. I want to be able to get out of my nine to five and, and stop working for somebody else and be able to start building your own you know, income streams and really set yourself up for success. You acknowledge that you need capital to do so. You want to be able to boost up your score even higher. You want to get the best rates. You want to get massive amounts of funding. Then check out Credit Council Elite today. I want you to go to www.creditcounselelite.com. Watch our quick 10 minute video on there that explains more about what we do. And then afterwards, book a call with me or our team to go over your particular situation. We'll give you a free consultation, uh, about 45 minutes to explain exactly where you're currently at, where you're looking to go. And we'll give you the roadmap on how to get there. And if you decide to work with us, which would be a no brainer, then we would be honored to be able to serve you. And if not, then at least you could walk away way with 10 different banks that we've utilized in the past you've never heard of that you can get up to $50,000 per bank. That's 10 of them right there. That's up to 500000 by itself just with this amazing list. So if you are tired of where you're currently at, you understand there's bigger and better things out there for you readily available, then I encourage you to simply go to Credit Council Elite today, right here, right now, and be able to lock in on that video, book a call with our team, and see what we can do for you. Otherwise, if you have not already hit that subscribe button to Ready, Set, Go Real Estate Investing Podcast. That is where you listen to any of your podcasts. Literally, just check that out. Ready, Set, Go REI Podcast. Hit that subscribe button so you get the newest notification every single Monday when the new episode drops. After listening to a few of those, leave that five-star review. It means the absolute world to me, to my family, and to what we are spending our time and energy towards to be able to make a greater impact here for you. We're all geared towards educating, motivating, and preparing you to take 
take action in real estate investing and helping you out with all your financial needs for financial literacy within credit. And uh, that's what we do here at Credit Counts Elite. So love you guys all so much. Make sure you hit that subscription, leave that five-star review, check out Credit Counts Elite, and we will catch you on the next episode next time. Till then, God bless. Peace out. This has been another episode of Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast, brought to you by Brandon Elliott. For more information, please visit BrandonElliottInvestments.com. Also, please don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment below. Thanks again for joining. Until next time, God bless.